this is super light sweet it is extremely hot in Santiago it feels much more like a desert not humid at all which is a little different than Rio and even Buenos Aires wasn't super humid but it is much drier here which I don't know if I was expecting or not I guess but my backpack's full because I haven't been able to check into my hotel I picked up lunch and oh, here's the subway um it was okay my ceviche was way better than I would have imagined but I was starving and I didn't really get what I ordered but it turned out okay he told me to order this sandwich which was fine it was a fish sandwich but there is I didn't know it was fried and I didn't know it came with this chipotle mayo type sauce on it wasn't really into that just kind of picked at it the fries were good and uh but the ceviche was uncomparable i mean it was amazing it was with the soy sauce it was absolutely just delicious so totally would go back to that ceviche from what i understand is a very popular dish around here so unlike rio and buenos Aires, seafood is a dominant food source here a popular food source so needless to say, my backpack's full because I did come straight to the airport and I just needed to pick up some drinks and snacks and stuff and there's this creepy guy, mascot, just having a dance party. That guy's got to be so hot right now. Walking back to the hotel, my phone battery's about dead. I'm not exactly tired, just haven't had the best day, I guess, so I'm just dying to get into my hotel room and sit down for a minute and really get out of the heat because I'm just really, really hot right now. But one thing I should mention though quickly because I was sitting next to these Americans at lunch who we were talking about the same thing. When you're trying to check into a hotel in South America, I have 100% learned, it's unlike America where they will usually just squeeze you in as is, even if you're several hours early. In South America, you have to wait until the check-in. You cannot come at one o'clock expecting to get a room when your check-in's at three. It just does not happen, unfortunately. So whether that means you have to rearrange some of your flights or whatnot, keep that in mind. They are very nice about letting you drop off your luggage. I've had to do that everywhere I've stayed. They don't even really like you just hanging out in the lobby for some reason. I was just kind of like gonna chill at the hotel, order some food delivery because I'm so tired and eat there, but they didn't really like that idea. That's okay. I saw some of the city. I'm just beyond worn out. So hopefully when I get back there, it's almost three o'clock. I can check it. I just checked in and here is my room, which ended up being smaller than I thought, but now that I've taken a look and around, I actually quite like it. This vanity area makes it seem so much bigger and pretty luxurious. I'm gonna have a problem though because another new outlet plug, which hopefully my converter does that one too. There's this little bench and then this big bed with this beautiful bed frame, kind of like a backsplash though. I don't know, they really did it well. And I opened the curtains up to make it feel a little bit bigger. And there's this inside. I don't know what you call this, but it goes all the way up to the top. And I think they just had random, like, just a bizarre middle part portion of this building they had to figure out how to use. And they put these nice lanterns in. So I thought it was kind of weird, but actually I like how it just gives some space. And actually, now that I think about it, there's some dude over there, you can see his legs. So that's a little creepy that I can see somebody, but oh well. Here's the bathroom, very nice as well. I can totally see this guy. Oh my God, he can see me. Whew, okay, I'm gonna have to put the curtains back because I do not like that. That door opens, which I'm no longer gonna do because I just looked out and that guy gave me a smirk, which I do not like knowing that someone knows I'm here. You guys know how that is. Um, my bathroom space is pretty good. And then there's a shower, which I feel like I'm gonna get this area just completely soaked. My last place had a bath, which was really nice, but honestly, it's so hot here that I don't feel like I would enjoy a bath. Um, but this 
I don't know, I just wasn't expecting this. This is a lot nicer than I thought. It's certainly a little tough to move around with two suitcases, so I'm just leaving that thing there, putting my other one with my equipment over there. Then there's a little refrigerator over there, but it is kind of cold. Isn't very cold, meaning that I have drinks that I bought and I put them in there. But I almost want to ask them if it can get cold because it just feels like room temperature, quite honestly. And I'm still trying to cool down from being outside because it's so hot. And every place I've been so far, the air works a little differently. So here, I have it at 18 degrees Celsius with the fan all the way up. The last place, I kept it at like... 22 or 23 okay so actually there's two guys in that room this is really creeping me out i just walked by and there's two guys like cuddling not that i have anything against gay people and i don't even know if they're gay i think it's great but i don't feel like they want me to see that so i'm gonna try to shut these curtains down i'm gonna try my phone's almost dead I think the heat's kind of getting to me finally. I don't know why the shower is leaking because I have not done anything with the shower. Where, how do I turn you off? How do I, I don't know why you're leaking. I hope you don't do that all night because that's going to be really annoying. I need to just calm myself down a little bit. It's been frantic. Lots of small hallways around here. And try to relax. I don't think I'm going to go out the rest of the night. The last couple days, I feel like I've gotten my butt just kicked from exhaustion. My stomach is really acting up. And I don't know what I ate or what I did. I uh, might check out the rooftop. But I'm going to kind of just sign off for the day. And then tune in with you guys tomorrow to see what's going to be happening. Shepherd's down, an eagle in a thermal is a circle around like a tire on a bike rolling down Columbus Street. But Katie got a little look of hope in her eyes and her arms unfold as she looked to the skies and said, I'm gonna learn to fly around with you, yeah. This is a little bit of a hike, which I kind of knew, but the view itself is stunning. There was a less steep height to take. It's another way around there that some people took. I had not have to go that route, the hard route. So I felt like I needed a challenge, which was kind of stupid, especially on a day like today. But we're gonna get up here. So far, the views have been amazing, so I'm sure it's gonna be more spectacular up top. Some guy just stopped me on the street, and this is, I think, the third guy who has mentioned this to me. Granted, I have no idea what he's saying, but he did say tell a photo. He was pointing to his waist. And I didn't read this up online as far as like safety and stuff goes, but the guy at the restaurant mentioned it to me too, and the guy at the hotel, and maybe somebody else, I can't remember. But evidently, there's a lot of people who steal phones in this area. Yeah, like a lot of people have alerted me time and time again, they don't just say it one time, they say it multiple times, that you need to be keeping everything by your waist. So I guess we have a lookout for pickpocketers. I haven't had that problem yet, but I need my phone out for navigation. So I'm no longer probably gonna even bother putting it in the side pocket. If you guys wanna put it in the front pocket, I don't have any right now, do that. Do not put it in a back pocket because Apparently people stealing phones is a big deal around here. I'm at this restaurant, which was not where I wanted to go initially, but I saw it. I thought I'd stop by and call it a few today, 
maybe couldn't have that room anyway ordered the shrimp caesar salad with avocado and then i ordered a stew but they sent me a hot dog what happens because that's what my boyfriend gets oh really he should be here to eat that because i don't like hot dogs anyway i'm gonna eat the salad it's a nice restaurant it seems to be a pretty cool area of town i'm starving and i may try the hot dog in his honor i ended up eating the hot dogs <laughs> i'm really hungry it wasn't a bad place it amazes me how ex inexpensive everything is i mean i got a water a pop a salad and hot dog which i didn't think i was getting all for 13 dollars including the tip I like being able to try some stuff. They did have like a beef liver tongue. And even though they said it was fatless, I was not willing to try that one. That just made me sick looking at it on the menu. I don't know what it is with a lot of these places I've been eating at. They just don't fill me up. I mean, this whole trip, I've been super hungry. Like, I'm still hungry. And maybe it's normal for the portions not to be big because with it being so hot out, I can assume that people don't eat as much. And I find that during the day, I usually am not like, too, too hungry because I'm walking around, it's hot out, whatever. But then later at night, I just get like super starving and I order a bunch of food. So I'm always making sure that I have snacks in the hotel room. But the portion sizes are definitely smaller than in America. Maybe that's something we need to work on. Maybe this is just the American me saying this. I prefer the big portion sizes. I hate eating and then still being hungry afterwards. I wanted to find somewhere that was Chilean for lunch and I found this on Google Maps and it ended up being absolutely amazing and I went here strictly because of the interior. It had this black and white tile with the like little mirrors. I don't know what the vibe was, I think it was French Italian, but they had Chilean food. It was called Ligeria, which I wanted to make sure I pronounced it right. Ligeria and it is in the Providencia area, so a little bit of a nicer area, I guess, of where am I, Santiago. Walkable, it's more city-like, if that's how you want to phrase it. And I'm realizing when you go to eat in places in South America, it is really not uncommon for things to be, like, out of stock. You know, like, in the U.S., you can kind of order whatever you want, but I ordered an amazing, amazing mushroom bean saute dish that was super good. They make everything very, very healthy. Normally in the U.S. they would put like thick cream on it, but it had this light, almost gravy to it. Either way, it was amazing. I don't really know what it was, but it tasted great. And then the salads, you know, in the U.S. we put so many toppings on we put bacon and cheese and croutons and all this garbage we probably don't need but here they just drizzle everything and a light oil or a light balsamic dressing and it just tastes really really fresh i'm not a big fan of arugula which was in the salad i'm getting into it I'm trying to get into it um so you really can order salad with not feeling bad i mean it's legitimately healthy salad that like it's unhealthy salads just do not exist here the bread was crazy, but I'm such a bread person. I could eat loaves and loaves of bread, so that was great. But it was a little weird that it came with salsa, so maybe that's kind of a thing here. I don't know. I'm not a salsa person, so I did not use that. And I was supposed to get a ham sandwich, of which I didn't get because, like I said, they were somehow out of it. I don't know how you're out of a ham sandwich, but... I wanted to try it because it was a little bit unique and there are certain spices on it that I was looking forward to try. Um, so I'm still a little hungry because the lettuce, well, the salad was kind of just lettuce and avocado and then it was mushrooms and beans. I ate both the rolls, bad billy, but whatever. I'm feeling carbs right now and I'm trying to enjoy life. I'm trying to 
eat foods that I want to eat and if I'm hungry like my god I want to eat whatever I don't I wouldn't call this necessarily treating myself because that's a little bit of a stretch it's not like I'm devouring pasta and pastries and everything but for me it's a little bit of a stretch eating things that are uncomfortable I think when you're on vacation it is the best time to try stuff that you wouldn't normally try and I'm really trying to be conscious of not ordering stuff I can get at home because I can get it at home what's the point point? and so far I am loving the food here. Not that I've had like every single dish. I haven't had an empanada here yet, so I don't know how it compares to Argentina. Everything I've tried in South America has just, I don't know, I just haven't really had anything bad. So it's been a great experience. I get why people rave so much about the food. Um, I'm gonna head back to the hotel for a nap. It starts with a niche and a tingle. And then it builds and expands. Like, <laughs> suddenly all at once. Yesterday I ended up just coming back to the hotel and taking a nap to which I passed out for like three hours. When I woke up, I went to get a couple drinks because I found out that the May fridges don't work because people were stealing stuff. So I wanted something nice and cold. On my way over there, there's a strange guy doing tightrope walking, but he was like doing, he was tightrope walking, walking. That's actually what it's called. But he was doing tricks on it and he was dressed as Spider-Man, which was really cool. And then there's this lady sitting in the center of the plaza. I think what I learned is that I've been getting up too early, which isn't a problem, but all the action in these countries happen like at night and in the late afternoon. So when I get up and I'm touring at 8 a.m., which isn't early for me because I get up so early, nothing is happening. I think I need to be a little bit more cautious about maybe doing tourist stuff in the morning and taking a nap and then just kind of like living in the culture later in the day because that's literally when everybody's out. And I feel like I'm missing out on that. And then I went to the rooftop and grabbed my laptops and make some flight plans. And scheduling. It was the first time I really just took some time to pause because I've been running around so much I haven't let my mind calm down a little bit and I'm always ahead of my body so I'm always wanting to go 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 go. This was the first time I actually felt like I was able to calm down. There is music coming down and there's people swimming at the pool and people having drinks upstairs and I wasn't really sure I was allowed up there but the guy downstairs who was absolutely amazing. I don't know he's amazing with English. So 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 nice as far as hotel concierge goes. Shout out to whatever your name is. But yeah he's like you can go up there whenever you want. I didn't really know that so I felt kind of uncomfortable like, going up there by myself but it's so lovely and it's so comfortable and because it's summer here the sun like it stays light till about nine o'clock. It was just amazing to be able to end my day doing that rather than in my hotel room because I think I mentioned this before but it can be kind of depressing and I love spending time in the common areas whether I'm at a hostel or a hotel or I mean, I don't know if an Airbnb technically called that a common area, but anyway, it was just very, very blissful on FaceTime my boyfriend. Yeah, it was just great. Now, what wasn't so great is I had leftovers, and I told you about the refrigerator, right? I went back, and I was like, oh, I'll just eat the leftover sushi I have. Bad idea. I might get sick today from it. I couldn't eat it. Like, it was just so, so bad. It smelled. It just reeked. But I didn't really, I don't know, I was feeling cheap, and I did not want to order any more food, even though the food here is very cheap. Um, and then I had some bread and ham that has been sitting in a non-refrigerated refrigerator for three days. So if I get sick today, that's on me. I have a tour. I was trying to figure out what to do the last couple of days here. And I booked a tour through TripAdvisor, which is actually very handy if you guys haven't used TripAdvisor. I'm learning all these little travel hacks that I haven't before. And it's to the Inca Lagoon in the Andes Mountains. And then before that, they're going to a local vineyard. And after all that, we're going to a llama park. I, I don't know, I really want to see a llama in an alpaca. So I know you go to Peru for that. 
but I'm really excited to see animals. I'm a huge animal lover. And I think the van has like 15 people, so granted I'm probably going to be the only solo traveler, but I think everybody should speak English because that's what the tour is in. So it's going to be a nine hour tour, we're going to take up the whole day, hopefully get lots of content. But I think there's also time for me to just chill out even though we're doing these tourist things because there is an hour and a half ride to the vineyard. I think I just really need to learn the balance of being able to be calm and with it, you know, like being a little bit more intuitive rather than just go, 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 because when I'm like, go, 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 then I don't really think well, plus not sleeping doesn't help, but I don't know, I think it's important if you guys are traveling for a long period of time to have days where you're just not doing a whole lot like I was yesterday. It may seem like I did a lot, but for me I wasn't doing a lot. And being okay with that because you can't be on the go all the time. And I think sometimes I was doing that as a distraction. You know, I don't think I think about doing it as a distraction, but I think I do. This whole course of kind of like trying to find myself and everything, sometimes I don't want to just like sit down with my thoughts, but that's a mistake. For those of you that are like me, maybe have a little bit ADHD and don't like calming themselves down or don't like being in the present, I do think there's a value to that. So let me finish my coffee. The van's supposed to be here and 20 minutes, it just got confirmed. I scratch till my fingers go numb. But my skin never bleeds. We made a little pit stop on the side of the road, and something I just learned about Chile is that there's a mountain range, and apparently the clouds don't cross the certain points in the mountains, which is why the southern part of Chile is so incredibly dry because the clouds don't move over here but the northern part of Chile will get a lot more rain and wetness so it's interesting because there's this cloud and this mountain that I forget the name of it looks more like a volcano and it's basically just because the cloud won't pass the mountain I mean who knew This is super light, sweet, um, fresh. We have put a bit of gas. So and it's somewhat it's bubbly. Yeah, but it's super fine. Slightly gas, right? Okay. Um, fresh summertime wine. Okay. It's, uh, Moscato de Alejandria plus Moscato del Rosa. Two Moscato here. Yeah, I might have fresh to get a bottle of And that. slightly sweet. Okay, how does that differ from this one? Because I've never had oh, that one. A little bit sweeter. This one is sweeter? Yeah, and this oh. is a... Well, with this gas. Okay. And this one is not bubbly at all? No. Oh, no. Okay. And we have chill. This chill. This is... Okay, we sell that uh, per boxes. Also per six, right? It's okay. a box of six. Oh, so you have to buy it. You have the to buy box. six You have them. to buy the box. Oh, yeah. That's not going to fit in my special, suitcase. Special sale. <laughs> Gotcha. Because, yeah, this is from our friend in, in Say. So it was for Halloween and something. So yeah, I love the labels, but. The labels. If you go to YouTube, you're going to see funny videos. Um, I have to do that. Yeah. yeah. What kind of wine you got there? Oh, it's sweet, bitch. Sweet bitch wine. Laughing about breakfast, all those laughs is cheap. Mmm, yeah. Kind of hey, wish the wine was the last part in case I get a little doozy. Ooh. Argentina, Bolivia. We have these animals. How many camels? Camelins. 
four. This one is five ones. Here you will see them. You know. Huh? Very good. Vicuña or Vicuña. And you can see it in Patagonia too. The only one in Patagonia. And also the local city. Guanaco. Mm. Guanaco. Guanaco is the ancestor of the llama. Okay, it is said that the, the llama comes from the Guanaco. And the alpaca comes from the Vicuña. Okay, in size. Llama. Guanaco. Alpaca. Huh. I don't know if it's a girl or a guy, but. They're so funny. Oh, they do. They have teeth. They have teeth. You want to make it on the gram? I like getting these close-up ones. I'm just taking a video. Oh, it, 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 oh. At least I can get a wider angle, though. <laughs> I don't think they're hungry anymore. They're not hungry. You guys were so into it, and now you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Are we friendly now? <laughs> this guy's not too bad. He's cute. What's up, dude? Yeah, stop eating. I think they really don't know what are all these phones doing around. They're like, what is all this stuff? <laughs> Do we eat it or not? They're so soft. This is the conclusion of my Santiago vlog. Well, to fill you in a little bit yesterday, I was chilling out by the pool, which was absolutely beautiful by the way. If you stay at this hotel, the scenery at the rooftop is just gorgeous, I will say, um, and we'll brag about. Staff here was amazing, and San Diego ended up being a better place than I imagined when I first got here. I was really surprised. I met some really awesome people. I met some really cool guy this morning from San Francisco area who's going to Patagonia, which seems to be the thing. Everybody down here seems to be going to Patagonia except for me. I guess I didn't get that ticket. Um, anyway, stick around to see where I go in my next vlog. It's a little bit of a surprise, but one I'm really interested in. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, and drop any comments if you have any questions along the way about traveling to South America or Chile in particular, or even more specific, Santiago. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this vlog.